it is about that time. So please just uh, please let me know if you can't see me or hear me or hear the video. I would really appreciate it. And oh, right. I would also appreciate it if just if you could please silence your cell phones and your TVs. Um, just so that way everyone's able to hear the information. You know, we only get to do um, some of these trainings once for a while. So it's, you know, always important that we, um, you know, are thoughtful of others. And, um, and by the way, um, just, you know, if you're able to, please, you know, take notes, um, write down things that you learn, things of that nature, you know, for these sessions, you know, so that way um, you can retain just a little bit more of it. And that way, you know, you can review them if you'd like to like go over the apps after we uh, go over them. You can have also have those notes next to you to, you know, be able to follow along as well. So, um, you know, just keep I just keep that in mind. <laughs> but um, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and go over the rest of the week with you all. So um, today is National <laughs> Pecan Pie Day. <laughs> and I love so, pecan pie. Ooh, I know, ooh. right? I used mm -hmm. to, I didn't, I didn't like it as a kid. And then when I went to high school, I just had a piece I and I was like, it. oh, I love oh, it. <laughs> said I can't even eat it. Mm. Oh. Love it, but, but um, it. Yeah, it was just so cool to find that what today was. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah. Today, uh, we'll be covering apps for history. So all of you history and trivia buffs, please, you know, you'll, uh, uh, I know you'll enjoy this session. We have the lunch club um, today at 12 o'clock and we have module five in the afternoon, iPad, keyboard, and of course, Jordan with the DC Public Library apps. Tomorrow, we'll have, again, the lunch club at 12 o'clock and we'll have DC Public Library um, come do a session on social wellness. So. As you can be the, see by the description, I guess you guys will be active. So <laughs> I, look, I look forward to that. Um, on Friday the 14th, uh, we'll be ending with our dance session. We'll be doing our pages training again, um, specifically, you know, again, document creation, but also how to print um, using your iPad. Um, we'll have this part and then um, we'll have part two on Monday. So please be sure to attend both of those sessions, and we'll be ending the week with module six. So virtual backgrounds, all about Zoom. So please come on if you have a question about Zoom, that is the time to ask. As always, we have the library flyer in the email. So please check it out for our upcoming in book trainings. So that way, if you would like assistance with something in person, you can reach out to our help desk and reserve a time slot. And um, to this week's highlight is that July is National Anti-Boredom Month, <laughs> which is celebrated in July annually. This month is a time to actively engage in pursuits to combat boredom and make the most of the summer season. Individuals are encouraged to explore different recreational activities, pursue creative projects, spend time outdoors, embark on trips or vacations, try new sports or hobbies, or connect with friends and family. Whether it involves traveling, reading, participating in sports, or discovering new forms of entertainment, National Anti-Boredom Month serves as a reminder to actively seek out an enjoyment and break the monotony of daily routines. It can be a fun and motivating mindset to make the most of the summer season and create lasting memories. So uh, when I saw this, I was like, oh, well, well, all of you all are definitely not bored because you have access to all this wonderful information in our guests and in our events and our social sessions so you know you guys uh, are definitely one step ahead of the game than a lot of folks so again i, I always say uh, you guys are the creme de la creme of our program so really got to give yourself a thought on the back for uh um making learning a priority in your life so i uh, you know we we hear you know Teresa and i and everyone at biotech really appreciates all of you getting on and um, in taking all of this information. So um, I thought it was just so interesting, this little highlight. But yeah, please check out Teresa's daily email every day. Uh, something's changed, any updates are always made. So um, please check it out. So today, again, like we said, we'll be covering apps for history. So again, any history buffs, any trivia buffs, we're gonna have a great time. So. Again, please let me know if you can't see me or hear me. I'd really appreciate that. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and read our disclaimer. The WildTech Beats the Senior iPad program. Its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual help, while being information designed for educational purposes only. We should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by WildTech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by the WildTech DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. <laughs> so today uh, we will be covering what is historiography, uh, the importance and benefits of learning history. As you can see in my virtual background and one of my devices, again, we'll be learning all about history today. Um, we'll be, as always, we'll be covering three apps of the history of everything, um, which is again a, hist a history app that we'll cover today in history, what's going on today and what went on today years ago, and um, kind of like a game, but also a trivia experience with our last app. So um, we're going to get right into there after we do our contacts. Last but not least, we'll have our overview and discussion on how learning history can positively impact our daily life. So as I always say, I really enjoyed creating this uh, presentation and uh, really just um, learning about this topic was quite interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So again, what is historiography? Uh, we'll have fun facts and videos. <laughs> so this um, is refers to the study of the methods, theories, and principles used in historical research and writing. It is the examination of how history has been studied, interpreted, and written by historians throughout time. This process involves analyzing aspects of historical inquiry, like the selection and evaluation of sources, on the interpretation of evidence, construction of narratives, etc. It explores the ways in which historians have approached different circumstances, as well as underlying assumptions and biases that have influenced their work. So um, basically, this is the history of, or the study of history, of writing, on how, um, especially the sources. Um, when I was in my uh, AP world history class in high school, we really had to look at um, the different types of sources that are available. For example, if uh, a world event occurred, um, uh, one source, like uh, someone that was actually there, um, is going to have a different interpretation of what happened versus someone that was not there. So that's one really big part of um, you know learning about history and how it's um, you know shared to to others, um, especially um, you know the construction of narratives because different point of views. Um, obviously, again, the same event will be. Um, written slightly differently based on the person who created it. So again, there are whole professions that are dedicated to studying how um, history has been written since uh, we, we knew it did. So just a little bit about historiography. <laughs> um, the origins of history can be traced back to ancient civilizations such as ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt where scribes um, recorded important events and chronicles, and also in ancient Greece, um, historians like Herodotus and uh, Thucydides pioneered the practice of critical inquiry and narrative storytelling in historical writing. Throughout the centuries, different cultures and civilizations developed their own historical traditions, often influenced by religious or political factor. So way back when, you know, people still, you know, recorded what happened and what occurred and people are still studying on um, what, you know, these scribes and people who wrote this, you know, ideas, what they actually meant um, in the context of today. Next up, we have a video, um, but, you know, and just saying why, like, why do we need to, like, why is this important, learning about the past? So um, I found this video quite interesting. And at the end, he has a wonderful quote that he uh, um, that he shares. So we're gonna, we'll discuss that for a minute or so. So again, this video is um, why study history. So 
give it a second. Why study history? Ironically, this question is as old as history. 2,500 years ago, Thucydides, the great chronicler of the Peloponnesian Wars between Athens and Sparta, and the man many call the first historian, said that, I have written my work not to win the applause of the moment, but as a possession for all time. Thucydides hoped that what he was writing would help future generations understand what transpired in his day. If they could learn from it and make better decisions, his efforts would not be in vain. More than two millennia later, the American social thinker, George Santayana, said much the same thing. Those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. But while knowledge of the past is a prerequisite to wisdom, it doesn't give the historian a crystal ball. We must be modest in our claim. Studying history provides an invaluable guide, but only a guide to current and future political, economic, military, and cultural challenges. Just as it is dangerous to be ignorant of past events, so too is equally risky to assume that history across time and space will repeat itself in exactly the same fashion. Mm -hmm. It never does. Still, with a proper caution, studying history can warn us of dangers ahead. For example, across the ages, appeasing or ignoring enemies has rarely proven to be a prudent strategy. Usually it's disastrous. The Greek city-states coddling of the Macedonian king Philip II, the weak Western democracy's reaction to the aggression of Adolf Hitler in the 1930s, and the indifference shown to the dangers of radical Islam by an affluent West in the 1990s make this point. There is another perhaps less recognized value in studying history. Every generation, none more than our own, suffers from a pernicious presentism, the arrogance that those now alive have created the most prosperous period in history. The result is that too often we judge a materially poorer past by the same contemporary standards of an affluent and leisured present. Those who study history can avoid these fallacies. Aside from the fact that the present is the beneficiary of the accumulated intellectual, moral, and scientific contributions of the past, proper knowledge of the hardship of prior ages teaches us the value of humility. Mm -hmm. To take just one possible example, it might be an easy thing to chronicle what seems to us prejudices recorded among the wagoneers on the Oregon Trail in the 1840s. It is quite another to imagine how the trailblazers struggled to survive one more day in an age without effective medicines, mm -hmm. labor-saving machines, or adequate shelter. Studying history also confers much-needed perspective. It's neither fair nor wise to attempt to apply the moral standards of today to, say, the far more deadly 17th century, when life, in the words of English philosopher Thomas Hobbes, was solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. The COVID-19 pandemic seems to many like a public health crisis without precedent until we take time to learn of the global outbreak of the H1N1 influenza virus in 1918. Yeah, just 100 the years Spanish ago. flu killed nearly 600,000 Americans in a nation of 100 million, with a worldwide toll of perhaps 50 million dead. And yet our nation and planet survived and learned from it. One of the ways that I used to endure the tedium, dust, and noise of tractor driving was to remember that my farming grandfather covered the same ground with a team of horses. It took him two days of back-breaking labor to cultivate four acres of land. I could do it in an hour, sitting down. But while <laughs> technology improves, human nature does not. That means we have, if we bother to look, a timeless connection to those who went before us. Their struggle to make sense of life is our struggle. In this regard, there's still much to learn from King David, the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, or Elizabeth I. And we can draw strength and courage when all seems lost from inspirational figures like George Washington, Frederick Douglass, or the Wright mm -hmm. brothers. Finally, the study of history teaches to value caution over certainty. We should avoid making judgments about who's good 
and who's bad as if we were watching a morality tale in the present. Major historical players like Julius Caesar, Robert E. Lee, and Napoleon were complex men who at points in their lives did some good things. That these efforts ultimately led to bad outcomes made far worse by their own outsized talents is one of the many tragedies of history. So why study history? Nobel Prize winning American novelist William Faulkner summed it up as well as anyone. The past is not dead. In fact, it's not even past. I'm Victor Davis Hanson, senior historian at the Hoover Institution at Stanford for Prager University. Thank you for watching this wow. video. So, I, I, you know, it was kind of short, but there was a, a lot of depth to that to that video. And like you said before, I'm going to go back to the quote. Um, so, um, so my name is William Faulkner said, the past is not dead. In fact, it's not even past. <laughs> Um, would anyone like to comment on uh, this quote and what it means to them or what they uh, thought of the video? Yes, uh, Alex, uh, Slanette. Uh, hey, I like that quote. Good morning. I like that quote a lot. And I wish that all of these people who, who want to erase historical stuff about African Americans and slavery and all of that, they need to hear that quote because it is not past. Uh, it, it is, it's, it's present because a lot of the people from the past have ancestors that's still living through it like that Tulsa thing that just got smacked down by the court the other day. So mm -hmm. I, I like that quote a lot. And I wish these people who who talking about woke and all of that stuff can, can hear that. <laughs> that's all right. I have. right. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for that. I definitely agree with you, Lynette. And, uh, you know, um, I think one thing that I got mainly from the video, which is interesting, is uh, um, the tragedies. Like, of those people, um, when, when I think of, you know, again, like he said, they, they, some of the things that they, you know, those complex people, they did was good, but because of whatever circumstances or, you know, life in general, they, you know, turn the other way. But that just makes me think that, I guess, you know, people from, you know, hundreds of years ago, you know, they were just trying to figure out life, I guess. So, you know, we're still doing that now, which is why I also think of this quote, because, you know, we're all still trying to figure out um, just, you know, just to be, how to be human and, you know, how we can be able to, you know, be with others and all exactly. types of human interactions. So and, and when you know, they were talking about the Oregon Trail, I was thinking mm -hmm. about the tears of the Oregon Trail because they was talking about the Wagoneers and not having enough medicine, but I'm thinking about all the Indians that was crying and walking, you know, mm -hmm. being driven away from their land to someplace over there on a reservation and the Holocaust. I mean, we can't forget this stuff. It happened. Oh, yeah. I Again, I definitely agree with you because like, you know, again, these people that study history, they have to look at um, what happened through the lens of different folks. So like you right. said, the people, you know, the ones who were, um, you know, they were doing the horses, but also the Indians that were, you know, with them as well. So each, each account is going to have a different perspective. So historians really have to look at it and see what actually happened versus what was like, um, you know, put out of proportion. So I definitely agree. So thank you so much, Lynette. <laughs> Anybody else would like to comment on this quote? Um, Alex, I just want to thank you. Uh, I just want to oh. Oh, Miss Goodhart, go ahead, Miss Goodhart. Okay. Yeah, I just want to thank um, the lady. I think she said her name was Lynette. Mm -hmm. I I appreciate your comments, girl. I have ancestors. <laughs> yeah, I really do. You were right on, right on target there. Um, because I, you know, I have ancestors. We have what we call Black Americans and uh, mm -hmm. Black Indian and <laughs> Black Americans with Native yes. and American ancestry. And I have a here. I have Cherokee and my here. 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 background, here. Seminole and my background in Delaware. And, and we do have stories that came down through our family line about the Trail of Tears. So um, 
I just want to thank and all my brothers and sisters who come on and, and have any comments um, after this. But thank you so much. I, I didn't hear the whole thing because I just got back in, Alex, and I tuned in. And I'm glad I heard what I did. And I'm glad I'm able to sit and hear this history lesson today because it is so important, so important. So thank you all. Thank you all there for what you do and all my brothers and sisters who are on the line. God bless you. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Ms. Goodhart. And, and uh, just look forward to our apps. That will cover a lot of more stuff. So, you, you know, you, you still got time. But so, thank you so much for that. I know that was uh, uplifting. And, it, and I'm so happy that I brought this topic to you all. So uh, thank Alex. you so much. You are. Yes, yeah. who's speaking? Yes. Hi, Ms. Sheila. Sheila. How's it going? Okay. Um, I know I just wanted to ask you, so do you think that history was more of what they made up and added some to it, or was it more factual and then they just made up stuff to go with it? Um, that's that's a that's a great question, um, Ms. Sheila. So I mean there's I I think in my opinion, I mean there's is so much, you know, that hasn't even been uncovered yet, you know, depending on what time period that we talk about. So <laughs> history, history is always, it's, it's going right, to be ever, right. it's going to be ever long. It's going to be forever. There, there are always going to be things that come up and, and change what we previously thought of what it, when, you know, what it was. So, you know, it's not, you know, it is. It's, it's about, it's just about from your point of view, no one's completely, you know, wrong, like about what they think would happen. It's just mm -hmm. about, you know, you know um, like for me, when I was in school and even now it's important to look up different resources or different sources of that same type of information to see if they say the same thing. And, right, you know, right. just being able to corroborate what, what you're saying. So, yeah. um, you know, it just depends on who's, who's recording it. You know, there's always gonna be a whole bunch of different factors that go into it, but um, it's just important to have a, um, be an open mind and again look at things from different perspectives and you can see what was factual and what was not so okay. that's just what okay. I think yeah. well, I was, I was, it was several statements that he made that I was very impressed with and like I say it's always good to know your history and um, mm -hmm. just like he made a statement that um, it's a process of all time for the future generation which is true and like you say the past is not the past because you have to go to the past to get to the future and, mm -hmm. and, the, and even in the statement that he made that, you know, that um, it, could warm, it could warm up danger ahead. In other words, if you don't know what's happened in the past, if all, what they went through through the past and stuff like that, and then like they say, history is repeating to learn. And so when yes. he made that statement right there, I said, right, because some of the things that's happened back there, even though it was some time ago, we're still going through it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, just like the road wave as far as that, I mean, abortion and things of that nature. And like you said, United States is supposed to be a place of freedom. And to me, mm -hmm. it don't look like we got the freedom as we, um, I think we should have because we still got people making decisions for us. And um, and then also, like you say, it, it helped us much more in the needed prospect and stuff like that. Things, to, you know, to help us to do improve ourselves and to be able to pass on to, you know, at the younger generation and for them to get more involved. So uh -huh. to me, this, this was a very important and educational um, subject for me. And I, I really enjoy it. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Dolores. I, I, just, uh, I, I just agree with everything um, that you said. And I, again, thanks you know, so much. I, kn I knew this video would, you know, it had a lot of great quotes and like, a lot of great points, just really just thinking about how like history um, it's, it's, it's important not to just say it's going to happen again. It's not mm -hmm. always going to happen again, hundred percent. It's, it might be like 50, 50, it might happen again, you know, maybe very slightly. So it's important to be kind of in the middle and just, just learn the ideas and the, and the morals from whatever before, but not making it, you know, like this, this you know, the same, you know, in the future, you know, cause things are always going to change for different reasons. And, Sometimes really, you know, takes a long time for certain things to happen, but sometimes right. just happen like like that. So um. because even the statement that he made when he said those that don't learn from the history is doomed to repeat, and that's mm -hmm. what's going on right now. Some of the things that we didn't 
learned from back then is being repeated now as of today. So history is very important. Oh, I definitely agree. Th thank you so much, Dolores. Um, last one before we move on to our apps is Diane. Hey, Diane, how's it going? Hey, I, it's going fine. Hi, everyone. I, I'm, I'm disturbed about history. Let me explain why. <laughs> because history is based upon what one race says it is. No one, like, uh, buried my heart at wounding, I mean, uh, the trail of tears. Mm -hmm. We need to hear the history from the actual Indians, what they went yes. through, not from what the white man interprets for, that they went through. We need to hear what the Japanese went through during World War II, not what the white man said they went through. Because to me, white America covers up the pain what other races go through. Mm. So, we, so we're not getting the true story. But Diane, that's do you my, think- yeah. That's my Diane. opinion. Okay, yeah, Don, yeah. but do you think that they might have had a little input? Do you think that they might have talked to them? You know, how they sit down and talk to people back in the day? Do you do you think that might could be a possibility for the um the white man end up writing what they had spoken to them about? Or do you just think that the white white man just well, I'm not, I don't want to get into the white man, but that that person just went on on their own and still sitting down I, and talking to someone. I, I think they talked about what they wanted to hear them say. Uh huh. In I other agree words, with you, Diane. Not the, true, not the true story, but but to cover up what. I, yeah. I agree yeah, with you, no. Diane, because we can look at our history books and the history books that I read about Black Americans. I, I saw slave people in picking cotton, and I didn't hear about all the Black wonderful inventions that. Black people made and, right. and, and patent and their stuff was stolen. So I, I agree with you, Diane. They put in what they wanted to put in. Right. I'm, and, saying, yes. I'm saying that it's 100 percent I'm not saying that it's 100 percent after everything I'm saying, but what I what I was just thinking that, you know, maybe that they had some kind of input, not just like just write exactly what uh, well, what they were thinking. That's why I'm not yes. disagreeing. Uh, yeah, yeah, so re really, really quick, really quick, you all. So I'm, I definitely, um, I, I love, you know, the conversation that we're having and, and, you know, everyone has points to what they're saying. What I would like to say is that um, it, what I, um, you know, growing up for me, I, I was kind of in that same boat. Um, like throughout middle school and uh, some parts of high school, like I didn't really see history from more than one point of view, as we said. But luckily for one of my history classes in uh, um, high school, again, I went to high school in D.C., like we looked, um, we, we looked at history from, a, from different points of view, um, specifically the Black point of view, but also the other point of view. So we read the, you know, the um, writings and books by those people to um to compare to how um it was you know history wise or the, no the normal of history if you know what i'm saying so i think it's just important that again um in like historians again deal with this every day but again you have to really look at all the different sources and different information that's available from whatever period that you're looking at so that way again you can see everything from a different perspective i think what Diane's really referring to is that we're not exposed to that information. We weren't exposed to that information, um, you know, for one reason or another, unfortunately. So it's on our end to be able to look up that information and, and really, you know, learn. Again, it's never too late to learn about what happened before us, but it's about making that effort because, you know, we, we have to do that on our end because, yeah, like, like you know, it's, it's not going to be taught to us, to everybody in that in that same boat we got we have to do it ourselves to be able to be more informed you're right alex and and you're right too dolores because that's why every race the indians the japanese the african-americans the jewish people 
they had to write their own history themselves because it wasn't being written. That's why Frederick Douglass and some of the people of his day started a, a black uh, newspaper and, 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 and the Japanese, every race wrote their own history because they, they couldn't depend on a different race to write it for them. Mm. Oh, oh yes. It's, it's, you see, there's just uh, so much that goes on with it. And there's, uh, of course, like we just discussed, there are things that need to be improved, some very heavily. But again, as, as people, we're still, you know, even though like, like he discussed we're about being, you know, having humility. And even though we may be so advanced in a lot of different ways, like right now, you know, we still have a long way to go. So um, yeah. Hopefully, in the future, thing things you know will just be better in all regards and in that way. And you know, it's uh, people are just been open to more ideas and cultures, and you know, may, as in general, just the world would be just more a caring and compassionate place. So again, we yeah. you know just right. we just we, Alex, we you know we still figuring things out. So Alex, um, I, can I, I say this? Um, I, I, I'm I, I'm seven, really quick. Seven. I'm 77 mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And what I find frustrating about life, I'm learning so much, mm -hmm. but I'm frustrated because it took me this long to realize how important all of this is to me. And mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can't really express myself because of my educational background yes oh, I wait, been we, well yeah. educated in what i am but smart to me. that's oh, why you, i find that's <laughs> why I, I talk so i have to think about what i'm saying but and i'm frustrated because i i read all of this stuff and i can't express myself right diane oh, you it's, be it's, it's okay, diane. i'll call you, you the history buff you be doing oh, yes Stop. Yes, indeed. Uh, don't, don't, yes. don't sell yourself short, Diane. You is yes. you, 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 you just amazing. Thought... You're amazing your own way. So don't you know you you know what you know? I I definitely feel what you're saying, Diane. Is I, you know I'm I'm just saying we're I'm glad that we have this opportunity now to be able to you know get, get it get it done. Yes. So you know there's a there's a time and a place for everything. So you know just. You know, I'm just glad that you're here today. So. Diane, you bring a lot to this iPad class. And yes, I'm you do. I from you. And that's the truth. Yes. I call you the history buff. Because I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what oh, you're We're harder oh, yeah. on ourselves than we are anyone else. That's true. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes, that's we true. are, Maddie. I, I, I definitely that's feel that true. a lot. In, in my in my own you know profession as well sometimes so you know we're we're all just learning we're still trying to figure out what life is and what the meaning of yeah. it is so you know we, we just got to take it one one day at a time, so, time. So, so you know th thank you so much you know that was that was a lot more than i expected you all but um i really appreciate all of the uh commentary and uh, and upliftingness that you all uh, offer so I really appreciate that. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll have a discussion at the end. Piece so of any, history. Anything else that you guys want to talk about the video, we can definitely discuss it then. So um, today, um, our apps, again, we'll be covering three different types of history apps. So I just, uh, you know, look forward to all the different types of information and the way that it's presented. So um, let's go I'll ahead and get some. Let's. Um, um, hi, hi Miss Matt. Is is it in any way that you could um, just give me like 15, 20 minutes? Oh, I can give you all the time in the world. Okay, I really appreciate that. I just want to make sure that we get through everything, okay? But you, I'm, sure. I'm gonna keep you in my mind, okay? Sure. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> so um our first app for today are is the history of everything. So it's a super simple app. This app is a vertical timeline that allows you to navigate, explore, and compare events from the Big Bang all the way to the birth of the internet. Events are beautifully illustrated and animated. And that's pretty much it. So this app, you know, you go to the app store, just like we, you know, we've been doing this, you know, these past few months, y'all, and we're gonna type in the name of the app. So history. 
of everything. So as you can see, when I type, like I don't have to write it all out. If I see it right here in one of the search results that pops up, I can just tap on it and it goes to the result. So again, it's called the history of everything. It's right here at the top right, it has a cute little dinosaur on it. And um, go ahead and get and uh, download the app. So once the app is downloaded, you're just gonna go ahead and open it up. So again, as you can see, super simple. There's a search where you can search for different events and things of that nature. And you have three different um, sections on um, history. Um, there's also like an about um, button that you can press, learn about the app, you can share the app, and then you can favorite different um, things that you read inside of these sections and you can look at them for later. But again, literally once you open the app, it just pops up like this. So let's start off with the uh, birth of the universe, for example. So you tap on there and look, it gives you some different options that you can look at. So let's start with the big bang. When you tap on a big bang, look again, this graphic pops up and it's literally a timeline. So you can look, you know, you can scroll and, you know, look at literally what happens um, throughout this section. The dates are on the left. So the first one, the big bang, that's like 13, like almost 14 billion years ago, the birth of the Milky Way was about 13 billion years ago. And you can actually tap on the event to, to um, look at more information regarding the event. So as you can see, that is the very first event that you can see is the Big Bang. Again, if you want to favorite it and see it for later, you, should, you can see the heart button at the top right. So you can favorite it for later. So if we tap on Big Bang, so you see, I can tap on the word Big Bang or even the graphic too. I can tap on it and it, it, it brings you all the way to an article and information about the Big Bang. So 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang model is that the universe began in an extremely dense and hot condition and has expanded. The theory suggests and measurements show that the universe is still expanding today. The Big Bang is a scientific theory about how the universe started and then made the stars and galaxies we see today. So as you can see, super simple to understand um, and it's quite interesting for the information that is there. So again, you can favorite it by hitting the heart in the article and you can look it for later. So same thing, birth of the Milky Way. If I tap on there, um, you can learn more about the Milky Way and what happened there. <laughs> As you can see, if I keep swiping, look, the next section, the sun is born. Same thing, you can read more about the sun. Um, the, it has a mass of 1.989 times um, 1,030 kilograms, which is 333,000 times the mass of the Earth. <laughs> the Earth can also fit inside of the sun 1.3 million times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I, um, I loved my physics classes in high school. So I, I was doing calculations with like the mass of the sun and the like, mass of the Earth and things of that nature. So this just bring back some memories for me, but it's just so interesting to learn about what's, you know, what's possibly out there. So again, keep going. You see all these different images on the right-hand side. It's literally a timeline just for you. So it's so cool that this information is here. So if we go down to the last one, it says animals. The first fossils that might represent animals appear in the 665 million year old rocks of the Trizona Formation of South Australia. <laughs> These fossils are interpreted as most probably being early sponges. Have mercy. <laughs> so again, as you can see, we went from the Big Bang to the first animals that possibly roamed the Earth. So that's the birth of the universe. So we go to life on Earth, look again, so you can look at single cell organisms, animals, dinosaur age, so let's go to the dinosaur age, for example. Again, well, you get all these different images on the right. So it's just so cool to see like the progression and the timeline on the left-hand side. Look, as you can see, first it was animals, then it was really fish. Then we came to insects, reptiles, et cetera. So this reminds me of the video that we watched about what um, basically the timeline of earth in, uh, in, a, in a day, <laughs> if you guys remember that video. So kind of the same concepts, but just in, timeline form. 
if you go to insects, 396 million years ago. Insects are a class in the phylum Arthropoda. They are small ter uh, terrestrial invertebrates which have a hard exoskeleton. So you can literally learn what an insect is. And, Alex, um, can I ask a question, please? Um, do, sure, do, it sure also, do it also tell you how to pronounce these names, some of the names? Uh, um, so, sometimes, I mean, it's a, one of it's, they created these articles. So as you can see, they do give like etymology for words, but, um, I don't think they give pronunciations, but what you can do is what I suggest. Um, if you can, um, go to, if you see a word, uh, I'm trying to copy and paste, but I'm not able to copy this information right here, but you can type it in Google. And when you type a word in Google, it always gives you the option to learn how right. to pronounce it. So I would try that out, okay? Okay, I got you. Okay, thank you. Awesome, no problem. Um, so again, these uh, are divided into three different sections, the birth of the universe, life on earth, the common era. So look, you can see everything from the Crusades all the way to the moon landing, even stuff about MLK, which is cool. So if look, you see the timeline goes all the way down, Again, you see the, the graphics on the right are so cool. So you can just see different events. You see there was Amelia Earhart, World War I, the suffragettes. I, I remember learning about that, that, them in school. Um, so as you can see there, you can learn a, a lot of different topics in history that relate to other parts of life as well. So that's pretty much it. In the history of everything, so a general overview information, and you get a nice timeline. So um, I hope you like that. Um, the next app for today, um, sorry, just give it one second to load. <laughs> um, let me go back here really quick, just seeing any other information so you guys can see the app while it loads. But yeah, you can share the app. Again, if I hit your favorites, you see I favorited the Big Bang, I can look at more information on the Big Bang right, right from the favorites. But again, it's cool that you have a visual timeline, but also the information available as well. Okay, our next app for today is Today in History, Light Edition, um, Top Historical Events Daily. <laughs> this app is the best way to get key facts about iconic global events and fun facts from across the centuries delivered right to your mobile device. Their reminders will make sure that you're never out of the loop. Um, top features include, uh, there's a quote of the day, there are images, there are headlines available. So it's just cool to see what happened maybe a year ago or a hundred years ago, even a thousand years ago on this very day. So again, you go to the app store and you hit search. And you're going to want to search for today in history. Oops, in history. And it's light edition. So today in history, light edition. You're going to want to tap on that. And it's going to be the one right here on the left hand side. Again, it says today in history, light edition. You're going to go ahead and download it and open the app and see what it has to offer. So let's do the same thing. <laughs> today in history. Um, as you can see, look, it says today is, in, in fact, July 12th, and when you open the app, you can see that um, there are different events from different time periods. So um, Friday, July 12, 1493, it says Hartmann's Schnettel's Nuremberg Chronicle, one of the best documented early printed books, is published. As you can see, I can uh, tap on the event you see the event kind of expanded so right here at the bottom you can open this link and learn more information but again also see like the, um, the image so if we look at this image right here and look at this book it was created in the late 1400s and it looks just wonderful like clear so it's just kind of cool to look at um you can it says visit more in wikipedia if you tap on the browser icon at the top right, again, it takes you to um, um, a Wikipedia article where you can learn more about how that 
um, piece of information came about. So this person was a German historian, physician, humanist, and one of the first cartographers to use the printing press. So again, this book, again, I'm just zooming in. This is the Nuremberg Chronicle showing Erfurt. So um, city, which is again, quite interesting. Same thing, um, 1690, sometimes they give you more information. Uh, so about almost um, 300 and some years ago, it's, it was the Battle of the Boyne. The armies of William III defeat those of the former James II. So again, more information. And if you look at the bottom, there are even more links available that you can look at. So the Gregorian calendar, you can learn more about what the Gregorian calendar is. And it also, again, gives you relevant um, events based on um, this topic. So as you can see in 1925 is when Turkey adopted the Gregorian calendar. In 1923, Greece became the last European country to adopt the Gregorian calendar. You can see in 1918, Russia adopted it. Um, the Republic of China adopted it in 1912. So as you can see, there's literally just a mini history lesson within each headline, which is um, quite interesting. Um, so if you notice at the bottom, this is the headline, there's the navigation bar. So again, uh, you can tap on each one of you different um, items. So we're in headlines now. If we go to events, again, uh, you can see different events. So on July 12th, um, you can see what happened in 2012. Lots of different events. So, um, look, 1979, the island nation of Kiribati becomes independent from the United Kingdom. What is that? I've never heard of that. So, look, I tapped and look, it says Kiribati. So, I can tap on it to learn more information of what this place is. Um, officially, the Republic of Kiribati is an island country in Micronesia subregion of Oceania in the Central Pacific Ocean. It has a population of over 119,000. Oh, so cool, look, and you know, Wikipedia, they have a lot of great information. So they even have the map. So if I zoom in on this map, I can see that where it actually is located. Um, so that way I have an idea of what they're talking about. So that's, that's quite interesting. All these different areas are considered the Republic. So again, it says Kiribati gains independence from the UK becoming a sovereign state in 1979. So, um, so yeah, again, more information just based on quick searches and tapping through the events section. So as you can see, the more I go down, the more further it is, or more later or earlier it is in our history, War of 1812, Again, it's worldwide, so there's a lot of different stuff that you can look up. You can also look at the births. So who was born on July 12th? So um, to, today, look, Malala, she was born today in 97. Um, Luke Shaw is, uh, was an English footballer. He was born in 95. So as you can see, you keep, keep going down and look at more births that happened or occurred today. And the same thing, just for more information, you can look at the deaths that occurred today. So um, again, I'm looking down, seeing if there's anybody we knew. Nope. So I, and, and if you wanna learn more information, again, you can tap and again, learn more information. So who was Takako Takahashi? It says they were a Japanese author and um, they passed away um, about literally 10 years ago. So I can again go to the Wikipedia article and learn more about this person if I um, were so inclined. How do you open it up to read it? How do you open it up to read it? Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's the, um, the internet browser icon at the top right. So again, when you're in any of the sections of this app, once you tap, on that certain section. So again, let's go to um, this Japanese author. You tap on that on that um, link, 
and um, some different options should pop up. So if I tap on this, the Japanese author, again, this information pops up. And then if I tap on the internet icon at the top right, I can then access their Wikipedia article. So again, look, I can look at their biography and again, more information about where they were at, the different um, things that they published or all the different references for the sources in the Wikipedia article. So, um, so yeah, you can look at the headlines for, for today or the events that occurred um, on today, the births, the deaths. And again, there's uh, a categories option right here at the bottom right. So you can look at history based on different um, categories. It's not loading up on my screen right now, but it's again, super easy to navigate. Um, last but not least, you can also change the date. So if we go back to the headline section, um, you see it says July 12th at the top right. I can then just go here and change the day. So for yesterday, July 11th, again, I can do the same thing for yesterday. So um, you can just keep looking at information about what happened in the you know past few weeks or even months or years, as you can see. You know, I can go all the way back to January 1st if I want. Oh, yes, <laughs> the day that Babe Ruth uh, made his debut into the major league. So that was interesting to see. For oh, July, yeah. so I saw I, that up there, yeah. <laughs> Babe so Ruth. It's, it's cool. It's cool. I'll, yeah, it's cool to see all the different information um, that is available. So yeah, if we go back to categories, again, look, you can look at different categories as you can, there's tons, countries, war, persons, cities, empires, institutions, religious, military, science, technology, so much different stuff today in history. So literally there's all this information that's available to you all. So I find I found that quite interesting. <laughs> So um, the last app for today, um, it's gonna be a fun app, is a history quiz game and trivia, world history learning app with hundreds of challenging trivia questions and answers. All the world history will be covered from prehistory to the 21st century. Channel your inner history genius, join other players and have fun while learning new facts about the history of the world. So if you're looking for fun, quiz trivia app, but also informative, this is the app for you. So as normal, we're gonna go to the app store and then again, type in our, uh, you know, our search that we want. So literally history, trivia, quiz game, if you wanna be that specific. Um, and, you've, and again, you're gonna look for the app. So this app is gonna be a little bit below. So again, it's called History, Quiz, Game, and Trivia. So you see this time I had to go a little bit down on the search result page, but it, again, it's quite easy to find History, Quiz, Game, and Trivia. So again, you're gonna open the app and then get and download that so let's go ahead and see what, what we know. So this is gonna be a, a little more interactive you all. So please, let's, uh, let's uh, learn our history together, okay? So when we open the app, again, world quiz, history quiz, we're gonna turn off the sound and the settings. So very simple to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and play um, this game. So let's hit play and let's choose our category. So um, again, it depends on which one you want to do, but uh, let's let's do some let's do some modern history <laughs> just to see what we know. Okay, so modern history, of course, there are different levels. So we're going to start off with level one, and uh, as you can see, they progress a little more different. You know, it's a little more harder each time. But we're going to start off easy with our first level. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 2016, a majority of the UK electorate voted to leave the EU. True or false? So and what's the answer the to this? So the UK okay. electorate voted to leave the EU. That's true. That's true. That's true. true. That's true. Okay. So look, 
It says Ooh. correct. Good job, y'all. So yes, that mm -hmm. was true. Uh, on 20th July 1969, where did the Apollo 11 land? Venus, the sun, the moon, or Pluto? Which one? Moon. Is moon. 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 Okay. Let's see if it's right. It, it is. Good job, you guys. <laughs> right. Next question. Uh, Benito Mussolini hey. was prime minister of Spain during the 20th century. I what think that was true. I think false. 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 He's from Italy. That's He's true. from Italy. Oh, that's right. Italy. Doing World War II. Mussolini. Right. He was from Italy. Doing World oh. War II. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm getting majority false. So let, let's see what the, true. If, it's, if it's false. The I ain't say true. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going, I'm going based on you all. From Spain, but Mussolini <laughs> was probably in Italy. It's true. It's true. Wow. That's so let's, let's see. So that's 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 why we that's why we're doing this together. So, we so what you choose, Alice? What you choose? So I'm gonna just say true just for the sake of it. So let's say okay. let's say true just for the sake of it, and then I'll tell you if we're right or wrong. <laughs> okay. So you look know. wrong, you wrong. wrong. No. So it was false. So Diane was from Italy. Yeah. Mussolini was he was like they were Oh yeah. So that's at the end of each quiz they'll tell you the you know the context and the right answer. So you know that's again this is this is, like, this is Mussolini was not from Spain, right? Spain. Yes, right. Yes. 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 So that's that's why it was um false. So again at the end they'll show you yeah. Again, they'll show you at the end the different correct answer and the and the reason why. So okay, let's go on okay. to the next one. Um, Martin Luther King delivered a famous speech, the steps of the Lincoln Memorial known as I Have a What? Dream. 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 We all got yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't yeah. know that. We need to, if we didn't know that, we need to leave home. I'm no. telling you now. We need to go back to school. Oh, man. This one says so case for use in out. World War I and World War II. Is it it's true epic. or false? True. true. That's true. true. False. I think that's false. That's false. I think it's true. That's true. I think it's true. Okay, I, I got like four true. I think and I got true. three two. around three uh, false. So let let's see what true says. Three. Okay, that was correct. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, which one is correct? <laughs> true. True. Is true. true. Well, it was true. So yes or no. So we're gonna move on to the next question. The independence that's movement that. of which nation was led by Mahatma Gandhi? India. So which, uh, India. <laughs> India. 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 Yeah. So let's. India. Let's, yeah. India is right. As you, as you can see, you there, you know, to this is a free India. app. Yeah, this, there are ads, so you just got to skip through the ads. So again, <laughs> this is a free app. Um, what was the Cold War? The Cold War was a race to see which countries can make the cities the coldest. Geopolitical USSR tensions between the USA, ongoing yeah. battles in Antarctica, yeah. or a period of uncertainty between what East was and the West Cold Germany. War? The last East and the West. That was a period of uncertainty between East and West Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Either one or the other. East and West Germany. The geopolitical tension between Russia and the USA. Yeah. No, so I, I'm no, hearing it's... I'm hearing two different answers, majority. So just so that we can show the features, you know, as you can see at the bottom, there's a hint option available. So let's see what the hint gives us. So look, the hint gets rid of an option. So again, so we go with a period of uncertainty. <laughs> but between USSR it's number and... four. Uh, this is Carol. Yeah. No. So let's read now. So, so again, let's just see. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just pick one, um, and let's just see what you know what the answer is. So, um, I you? heard the USA USSR. I think it's that one. I'm not sure, but let's, I let's think tap that on one that too. one and see what it is. Geopolitical. So, yeah, I was right. So yeah, yeah. Can US, USA <laughs> and USSR. So again, this, yeah. this, we're just having oh, fun, you oh, all. <laughs> yeah, whom did Donald Trump defeat to become the U.S. president? So, which, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that one was Hillary. pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, yeah, the global economic downturn in the 1930s was known as the Great Bear Depress One, the Great Fall, Great the Great Depression, Great Depression, Great Depression, Great Depression, Depression. Great Depression. Great Depression. Great Depression. Great Depression. Great Depression. Oh, yeah, Great Depression. yeah, you guys are yeah. right. Good job. Good. And, and we, we'll, your teacher. Yeah. <laughs> one more. And we, we got one and we'll more move to, on get, to our last question, you all. So considered a cultural oh. icon of the 20th century, the entertainer Elvis Presley Elvis became Presley. known as the king of rock and roll. True oh, or false? True. 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 Very, very true. true. But there was another true. king of rock and roll. Which language yeah, they, would said, you like? they said that's true. The so, yeah. <laughs> yep, so let's oh, see if it I was heard right. that, Lynette. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was correct, you all. So cool. Good, good job. Good job. So now that's we just finished the, right the round. Role. <laughs> so let's see. Look, they score you, so we we score we did nine good. out of ten. Yeah, we did yeah. Real so good. we can yeah. we can claim these different prizes and some more coins yeah, available. Yeah. So, so look, we can we can see the summary of our answer. So look, it says review your answers below. So you can actually review them and see what you got right and yeah. um, what you look. So look, Go it says Benito Mussolini was prime minister of Spain. So it wasn't true, this was false. So we, we, you right. can reveal the answer, but this was a true false. So we know which one it is, it was false. But as Boy, you can see, you, it goes over the false. different facts for you. So that way um, you can just review answers and maybe write them down, but also it's just, you know, pertinent, you know, it's, it's actual information that you know we we can know now so um it's so interesting so like you have unlocked the next level so cool i can claim a prize of more coins so as you can see you know you, there's a lot more levels and such especially yeah. for modern history for the middle ages same well, thing you, know, you can Alex, you can it, go it's more fun when we do it as a group because that's true <laughs> mm -hmm. my, yeah, my yeah, was like, was, oh i wouldn't like it that much but as a group you know we all yeah. can our, our level of abilities and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. so it's so it's so fun and uh you know just um you know what you thought you knew or what you thought you didn't know you know it's just cool to see so this, so, you know, Alex, this hey, is, bring this, this back to us again so that we can all play together <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind but this was you know very simple to go over and, um, you know, you learn information while having fun. So uh, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed that um, activity. So, um, Very much. yeah, so again, um, we'll end with our overview and our discussion. Um, and we'll talk about how learning history positively impacts our daily lives. So um, what is one new fact that you learned today? What app or apps are you interested in trying out? What is your favorite history topic? Maybe one that we went over. Or what time periods are you curious in learning more about? Last but not least, how does learning history positively impact our daily lives? So please, I, if you have a question, this is time to ask it. Um, please raise your hand. I'll go based on the hands first. And um, even if you have a question, I'd love if you could answer one of these. But as you can see, we had a whole bunch of fun, especially towards the end. And it was uh, um, so interesting to create this presentation for you all. So I appreciate you uh, um, participating today. Um, we'll be, I have about 20 minutes for questions and we'll have our lunch club at 12 and our module 1.30. So please stay on um, for our later sessions. But um, first up, um, hi, Ms. Um, Maddie. Um, thanks for holding on. I appreciate Not that. A I hope you enjoyed today. Not a problem. How are you, Alex? Good, good, good. Nice to see you. Great, great. Um, yeah. Now I want to go back on something you said that mm -hmm. when we re when we research, we need to research different uh, avenues mm -hmm. and make and make our own decision. You know, instead of mm -hmm. just researching, just hitting one thing and it says and go along with that. Mm -hmm. um, I know. I was taught. Uh, I had a great DC public school that education. Mm hmm. And Same here. yes, and my te and the teacher told, and I've learned that history was actually broken down to his story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so right. So those that are in control write the stories. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Yes. Okay. And for an example, just the last one, Elvis Presley was was considered the king of rock and roll. 
Mm-hmm. That's because that's from the people that controlled history. And who wrote the story. Right. So but, we, but if a lot of people on here know that Elvis Presley was not the king of rock and roll. Exactly. No. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but, that's not. Mm-hmm. But if you answered that false, you would have gotten it wrong. Certainly. Because, because they consider Elvis Presley the king of rock and roll. Right. And that right. goes back to whoever is writing the story. It's right. who's writing, it's who's Just writing like the story. His story. His, yeah. his story. His story. I, 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 I agree with what you're saying. And, you know, for to each, you know, their own, really. But, you know, sometimes things are more, you know, spread than others. So it's just about knowing, like, the context of, like, those things. Like, specifically, like, music, you know, they say there's, like, the king and there's the queen of soul. There's all all these different types of, you know, titles that are being given. So it just depends on who you're speaking to and what their preferences are. So, again, like like you just said, and like what you're saying, there's so many different perspectives and different um, points of view that that you just have to. Right, right. And that's true. That's true. But now when you take King Tut, which is actual supposedly fact, and you represent Mm -hmm. him as another, his identity as another group of people for your own reason, that's controlling. That's, 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 that's the hit. That's his story. Did I make sense that? Uh, yeah you're no you're making you're making sense there's again there's so many ways that we you know are or have to improve our way in in learning about what has come before us so it's a lifelong and human long experience so um so you know we'll, we'll, we, we're gonna get better but it's just you know we just take some time so yeah we, we got your point sis I, I, I like the point that you're making to be able to distinguish about this matter of his story, you know? So I think we got it. I think we got what you were saying. So yes. thank, you. thank you. Yes, we, we, we appreciate that, Maddie. I, I it's hope kind of are. like indoctrination of a sort. Um, and, and I think that what, what also you were saying too, is that if when you, know, when you answer these and then you go back and you check the answers and you, <laughs> you know that it was a different answer other than what the answer that they were giving, it, 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 it gives you the impression that you are wrong and you're not wrong. So history in a sense is an indoctrination uh, point in some ways in, in, with relation to some uh, certain things, you know. Uh, King Tut was an actual example. So I think that's why you, you made that distinction there. So thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. We got there's, it. There's so many different, uh, again, perspectives and things. So it's just important that we do our own research and figure out really, you know, and for our own sake, what, what happened. So but thank you. Thank you so much, um, you all. And I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation today, Maddie. Thank I you. I did. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I know your hand is next up. But I, it seems like you're having some connection issues. So um and can you hear us? Okay, just um, let, let me let us know if you can uh, if you can um, if you can hear us. But um, hey, hey, Lynette, um, I hope you enjoyed today. I did enjoy it very much, Alex. And uh, number four it says, how does learning history positively impact our daily lives? I want you to know that listening to this presentation has positively impacted me <laughs> and made me feel really joyful and happy and hopeful. So thank mm-hmm. you for bringing it. And as I said, you know, this is, was a lot of fun, the quiz part of it. And, and I think I would enjoy it more as a group. Like you can bring it back and we could just do quiz stuff for, for, for a session every now and again. And cause I enjoyed that very much and it, and it, it, it validates who you are and what you know, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it, it, it certainly does. And it, it shows us what we know, but it also shows us what we might be interested in learning or what we may not know. So right. um, I, I, I love the interactive portion too. So I'll be sure, you know, I, I'm, you know, depending on the lesson, just uh, incorporating that more. So yeah, every- if you run short of topics, then always bring this back. <laughs> 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 Thanks yeah. Alex very much. Oh, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for getting on, um, Lynette. You have a great day.
Thanks so much for attending. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, next up is uh, Diane. Hey, hey, Diane. I hope you enjoyed hey. today. I'm all right, Alex. <laughs> What what took me is the Mussolini question. I know Mussolini. I know, right? Yeah, but because I didn't read the whole thing, that's why I got it wrong. Oh, I yeah. it was Italy instead of Spain. Because I think <laughs> I mentioned Italy at first. So that's why I got it wrong. And I like this because this will help you with jeopardy if you ever go on. Oh yeah! <laughs> you didn't mean this. Oh yeah, I, I, love, I love all the d different information, and right. certainly, like you said, uh, um, th there's just a lot of trivia and a lot of fun facts here and there. And um, I definitely feel you, Diane. It's you know, I think one thing that I've learned, you know, it's it's important that when you're looking at like documents and information, or you know, any types of information. It's kind of important to overview it first, like fully, you know, and that way you kind of have a general sense. Just be cognizant of whatever you're looking at and taking into account everything that you see on whatever medium you're using. Like a book, for example, it's important to look at the images and the captions of those images and looking at the different paragraphs, different like formatting, um, different citations that are in the book, like how it's formatted and like, you know, that's why they give you a table of contents. So that way you can like overview like what you're be looking at and you can see how, you know, they format it and what you may be interested in of. And like, you know, and, and also just, you know, documents in general, it's so important to make sure you look at the whole thing so that way you don't miss any information because you may be thinking that you're answering the, the right question, but you may have missed a word or two. So I had to really learn that. Right, like taking, right. taking like uh, tests in school and such, it's so important to look at everything. Each word is important. So um, so thank you. I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed today, Diane. Thank you. <laughs> um, next up is uh, Brenda. Hey, Brenda, how's it hey, going? Hey, it's going good. Alex, I enjoyed all of them. Um, in fact, I've already installed all of all of the apps <laughs> on my. I know my that's iPad. right. <laughs> so, oh, but yes. I, I really like that app where it shows the history uh, on one side and what the event that was taking place. I thought that was very interesting. And you know what? Another thing that I, I the guy when you did the first presentation, he said that to the effect that all of us are, it may be a lot of us witnessing history, but we all have a different interpretation of it. So that made me yes. think of uh, when they said uh, Presley, Elvis Presley was the king of rock and roll, which I didn't agree with. So that's, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's your interpretation. You know, everybody interprets, ter interprets something different. So, yeah. but oh, yeah. yes. But that I, just, that I makes us that makes us yeah. human. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it just makes it, if if we all thought the same and looked the same and did the same, when wouldn't, wouldn't the world be so boring? It would be boring. It wouldn't it be so boring? And <laughs> but even though even though right you know now you know we, we deal with goods and the bads because yeah. again that's you know it, again I'd I'd rather deal with that and have you know enjoy life <laughs> and see you know embrace our you know differences and our different ideologies and. You know, it's it's it, it comes a lot into our life based on like what it we're does. looking at. It's it's important just to not look at one thing and be like, this is it. It's important to look at different things um, regarding that topic, right. especially if you want to be more informed and not just look at that from one perspective. Because if you look at from another perspective, it may paint that original party or the other party in a many a different light. So yeah, so it's. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I, I'm yeah. grateful that I, I learned to that concept really early, you know, even before you know, I was like doing papers and like, you know, reading books and stuff. Because, yeah, it's, it's again, so boring just to look at one thing. You got to look at everything. You, look so at way everything. you can just be a more well-rounded individual. Yeah. So. And I, you know what? I think I, I like to look like, look up people, look up a, a, a different people to see their history as well. So. 
that that would be I think that would be great too. So you know, like Malcolm X. Oh, oh yeah. Look, uh -huh. look at his history. You know how he got started, and you know with his assassination and stuff. So I, I think this is a good thing, and I like the quiz too. I, I, I you can test yourself. That's oh yeah, good, you see, there's you go in there's, there's sixty playing. levels That's all together. Good. Yes. 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 So from literally from prehistory to today. You can have 15 levels of those four different categories and you can right. really learn a lot. Like, even though, in, you know, again, it may not be 100% accurate and it, what, what, what is anything 100%, but it gives you right. all of that, you know, the general stuff, but also again, some, you know, nobody knows everything. I certainly don't. And in school, right. like, you know, history wasn't my favorite topic. And, but, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, just seeing what you can learn and what you do mm -hmm. know, just based on like what you looked, um, you know, what you watch, like what you do on the daily, because we all talk to different people and have seen different people and have been in different places. So we all have a little bit of a different perspective on oh, yeah. um, what, what we know and what, what has occurred. So it's all, it's all about bridging those gaps and learning from each other and not, you know, not to take any, anything not really, you know, personally, I would say it's just, you know, being um, observant and uh, acknowledging the other pers perspectives and point of views mm -hmm. that are yeah. out there. So that way, right. again, you know, it's always about empathy and compassion, just like again, the right. video said, like those th three folks that they discussed that may have not been the best people in the world. They weren't originally, you know, like that, but because of the events to their lives and whatever happened, you know, they, they turn another way so mm -hmm. it's just all about thinking about yeah. how you know if we were in their shoes like uh, again you know some folks they it took them a day just to do like two or three acres of land or something but right. the guy said you could do it in an hour sitting down like sitting you know down. when he said sitting down I was like oh man like for real so yeah. you know it's it's just about you know keeping a what's the word for it just you know an overhead and just being you know just recognizing everything else. Mm -hmm, so I, mm -hmm. I, re I really enjoyed that video. It was a lot too. of great little and tidbits. You know, another thing too, Alex, we all have our own different opinions on things. You know, it may not be, it's not wrong because we all have our own different opinions on certain things. So none, neither one is wrong or right. So mm -hmm. that's, it's just an open discussion. Somebody at my door got to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Brenda. We, we appreciate <laughs> that. Lots, lots of great, lots of great uh, little tidbits right there. So um, thank you. Any, anybody else want to raise their hand, want to comment on what they liked or what they learned? Um, any new history facts? You can also unmute yourself as well. <laughs> um, I see. Hey, hey, Yvonne, I hope you enjoyed today. Oh. Oh, yes, I, I most certainly did, um, Alex. This was very interesting. And now I know why these people on Jeopardy, I enjoy watching Jeopardy every night. <laughs> and now oh, I too. know how they uh, become familiar with such esoteric information. Mm -hmm. and, and every now and then I'll get a correct answer. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I'm sure they have these apps that they uh, use to preview their appearances on Jeopardy because it's the information is very you know uh, esoteric and unfamiliar to most of us. Oh, if, uh, I, did you I, watch it last night, Jeopardy? Because I think that was the final. Man, watch yes, it. yes, I did watch it. <laughs> yes, that was a lot um, of fun. Yeah, one person got the correct answer, but there again, it was the, it, a question that. The average person, even a history a professor, would not have known the answer to. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, Yvonne, like I love me. You know, I've been watching basically like forever. Like my whole life, I was I've been watching Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy my whole life. Like, yes, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't have it. Yes. yes. I don't Real have a TV, as well. so it's uh, it's you know, occasional that I get to see it like when I'm at a friend's place or something. But whenever I look at you know Jeopardy, it's just so cool about what you can learn. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, it's this. Like and you know, if you, it, it's just so fun to me and all the different information. And it takes a, you know, a certain individual, to, you know, to really like stand out. Like you know, again, if if you've seen yeah. Jeopardy, you know, you've had those champions, those people that went on like 
60 or 50 or 30 day streaks or something like that. And it's just, yes. you know, it's just so interesting. It's so interesting to look at. And, you know, they yeah. may have studied in so many different ways. Like, you know, some folks, they either read it or they listened to it or they watched it or they did a combination of it or they been yes. doing it all their life or some of them just started. I know one dude I really like, um, his name, uh, what was his name? He just won the tournament of champions, but he was a bartender. And he, he went on the show and he has won so much money like from it just because, wow. like, you know, what they, yeah, what they, I think his name was James. His name was James. His name was James. He just James. won the tournament uh -huh. of champions um, yes. like a month ago or something. So he won yes. like $500,000 or something. Yes. So that was, that was just, that was, it's so amazing. And yeah, the bite, you know, just to give you all a preview, we'll, we'll be doing something similar to that next week. So I really look forward to our next presentation yes. next and, Wednesday. And Alex, you know, hey, yes. Alex. Okay, and Alex, when are you going on Jeopardy? Hey, uh, <laughs> maybe that was always, that's always been a, that's always been a thing. I've, I've been uh, to in an audience of Jeopardy when they were down Constitution Hall a few years oh, ago. Yeah. But oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, but I, you know, it'll be so cool if I do, but um, thank you. Uh, Yvonne, you were, you were saying? Oh, I was just gonna say that Ken Jennings seems to know a lot too, because very often he will supplement or add some information, you know, to oh, the- Oh yeah, he, he's, he's, the main, he's the main one right there. I loved seeing his like first game and his last game. I remember watching that yes. like 10 years ago or well, something, so. You know, he, he, he hosts Jeopardy sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, for the champions, the, um, the person off the Mayim Bullock from Bing Bang Theory, she, she does yeah. it now. She, she, she does a good job too, I really like yeah. her. Yeah, they're, so. they're both very good. Just to be able to read the questions and pronounce the words to me is says a oh, lot yeah. about your yeah. ability. Oh yeah, bless bless their hearts. They got they you know they they got to really be on their p's and q's. You know, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Oh no problem, Yvonne. Um, we have uh, time for like one more comment, one one more question. Again, it's so it's so fun just hearing you all. Uh, Say that you enjoy these sessions and uh, all the different little tidbits you know we all know you know each of us know one things really well and maybe one unique thing that only us know so by us like sharing that information and knowledge is so is so uh, helpful for you all hey hey and you're going you're going in and out and um again i'm pretty sure it's your connection so unfortunately we can't hear you right now um um just please send send me a chat and, and i'll be able to answer it um if i uh, well, look at the chat but again anybody else would like to share an answer to one well, of these questions it's, it's, it's not only history it's her story too oh yes <laughs> <laughs> definitely I, I in control whomever has the power that's right mm, yeah so it's just uh you know um just learning about Again, like the video said, not to solely based on what's happening later on, based on what happened, but just using that to for our lessons that we learned and different I ideals that have come from these different historical periods. So, um, so yeah, I really enjoyed um, hosting today's session. So again, I'm on every Wednesday at 1030. So I look forward to next week's session and the sessions we have for the rest of the week. I hope you all enjoyed um, yesterday with uh, Metro Access and the Lunch yeah. Club and, uh, our, and, and the Lunch Club yes, on Monday as well. So, um, so whoever so just said that who's in power is so true because, you know, I'm going to say this, I'm going to go, when Trump was in power, everything was fake, fake news, fake this, fake that. So we have <laughs> to have the discernment to be able to determine what's fake and what's not fake. Oh yeah, what's yeah. what's 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 out there and what's not. So it's so important just to look at different sources and information. So we we definitely agree. So thank, thank you so much, Lynette. Thank you. I, thank you. I, I thank always you. enjoy your segments. I always enjoy your segments. They're so fun and full of learning to broaden our horizons. I oh. always enjoy yours. Oh yes, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss Maddie. I, I I appreciate it. It's it's all for you guys, you know. That's what you, I do Alex. it for. So you, you I, do a uh, good job. Appreciate Alex. you all. A good job. Yes, thank Aww. you, Alex. No, no problem, you all. So um, yeah, let's, Alex, uh, we're gonna yeah. miss you. We're gonna miss you doing the um 
cooking session. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate that. Hopefully, uh, you know, um, I'll be able to present more on that. It was so fun making those for you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, yeah, it's uh, it allows me to, you know, work work on these more. So again, next week, we're going to have a lot of fun, you all. So just okay. check, check it out. So um, I, I don't I, let's welcome um, Crystal um, for our book club for today. And I'll see you all on in about an hour and some change. So I hope you all have a great rest Alex. of your day. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you all. Let's